Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing CMRO73 in a three-minute game on chess.com. It's another clock as a weapon video. My opponent plays C5. Let's play the open Sicilian. Knight F3 followed by D4. Hope you guys are all having a fantastic weekend. It is a scorcher here. Very hot outside. Hence why I'm staying indoors and playing Blitz. <laughs> okay, Bishop G5, Nidorf. Let's play F4. I used to play this line all the time when I was younger. I enjoy the attacking positions you can get out of this. And bishop g5 remains one of the most challenging ways to play against the knight orf. Okay, so all this is standard. g4 is another move. Looks like black may play this brown variation, which I've actually played from the black side a little bit too. So I have some idea how to combat it. So black gets this nice e5 outpost for this knight. Yeah, here, and I think now I want to play knight f3. And after it takes, I'm going to put the bishop back here. It's usually the thing to do. Okay, black's gonna take there. And now take most likely? No, okay. Hmm, and usually black is gonna throw in h takes g5, so it makes me think I can play f4 if I wanna try to hang on to this pawn. I think I should. I should attempt it at least. Maybe knight g6, bishop g3, then take g5. But at least I uh, have pushed that knight around a bit. I could also maybe play queen f2 here, although that somehow looks like it'll be unsuccessful. Looks like it messes with my coordination a bit. Hmm. Not completely sure, though. Queen f2 would defend both of those points. I know I'm using a bit of time here, but I feel like this is an important decision. I'm going to go with this because I don't see bishop g3, h takes g5 uh, really punishing black or questioning black's strategy. So I'm very curious what Black's going to do here. It looks like an awkward move, I admit. That's why instinctively I didn't like this, but let's see what Black has in mind. Okay, Queen C5. Hmm. So offering a Queen trade. Okay, I'm going to take Black up on that. And do I retreat to F2 or G3? Key question here. I think... Hmm. I think I'm going to go to F2 and try to target this pawn. And now let's take, and when he takes with check, play king b1. I'm down a bit on the clock. And now knight a4, going after this guy. And it looks like black can't defend that pawn. Also, maybe I have an auxiliary idea, knight b6. Although black could play rook b8 against that. Okay, let's throw this move in first. I don't think this pawn's running away anywhere, so let's just save the h pawn. Okay, take, for sure. How's this bishop gonna get out? Ooh, he trades. Ah, he's because he wants to take here. Okay, fair enough, but black's king looks like it'll be somewhat weak in this case. Let's go here. And, hmm. Let's play rook h7, maybe rook g7 after that, looking for rook g8 ideas. I couldn't play rook h8 because the knight guarded it. So equal material here, but I still like my position a little bit. Now maybe b4, or bishop b4. Though bishop b4, he's probably going to play knight e5. And checking doesn't do a whole lot. Let's go bishop d4 instead. On king f8, I might have to play rook h7 again, but I think i got to keep this knight out of here. Although, admittedly, the knight can come into f4, which I'm just noticing now. Okay. Hmm. Just play a3. Yep, knight comes in. Opposite color bishops. Yeah, I shouldn't really have much of an advantage anymore, but we'll continue fighting here. Striving for something. Maybe bishop check. Try to go after f7. At least I was able to defend e4. That's helpful. Okay, yeah, he's thinking a lot on this move. Uh, might as well go here, threaten discoveries. He's going to be forced to move his king again. Let's check. Mm -hmm. Let's go bishop f6. Don't see an immediate way to play, but I like my setup here. He seems a bit stuck in this position. Uh, let's go rook here. I don't want him going rook h, rook h5. 
And now I can think about check and check here or check and go rook f8. Yeah, let's check and play rook f8. Go after this pawn because he can't defend it. Okay, take. Let's take that. Go here. How's he going to defend this guy? King d6, I take the bishop. Uh-huh, he has that move. Okay, let's play here. Mm -hmm. Let's go here. Bring this up. It's going to be a time scramble, but one that looks good for me. Take. Let's play a check next. This is where my new mouse hopefully will pay dividends, but <laughs> I'm a little uncertain about that at the moment. Okay, this should be a winning position. Actually, a tricky endgame now that I think about it. Okay, but he lost on time. I should be winning here at the end because I can maneuver my king around a b6 and then play pawn c6 check. I want to get my pawns connected on light squares. And I don't want to play c6 yet because if I were to do that, black could sacrifice their bishop for both of the pawns. So I need my king on b6 here, play c6 check, and I don't think black actually can stop that plan. So I think that is a win at the end. All right. Chess.com gave me a clean bill of health on that one, but certainly didn't feel perfect, as I said in a bullet game the other day. Ooh, okay, I'm looking for my next game. I was about to turn on my fan, but I already got the game. Playing Banzai, 25-35, untitled player. Uh, B5, okay, B5 is always interesting. Let's do this. Play Knight F3. Flank strategy from my opponent. Uh, I think taking here is a good move. And let's play Knight BD2. Maybe looking for e5, knight e4. Or first let's play a4 just to weaken black's position a little bit. I think this square is nice for the knight. Black has these two bishops on the long diagonal, but otherwise I really like white's position here. Tony Miles, the late English Grandmaster Tony Miles, beat Karpov in a famous game, I think in 1980, and I want to say Sweden, where he played a6 on move 1 against Karpov's 1d4. So that is similar to what happened here. My opponent opened with b5, but b5 and a6 are somewhat similar. They could transpose. Okay, my opponent's thinking here. I wonder if he's thinking about if he castles, if I can do the Greek gift. I probably won't even play that. I'll probably just play knight e4. I'm gonna go turn my fan on real quick. Fan is a weapon, guys. Or in my case, this oppressive heat as a weapon against me. Okay. Uh, knight b3 or take on passant. I'm going to take on passant. That definitely seems easiest as a way to gain the initiative. I'm on this bishop. I don't think he wants to part with this light square bishop, so I'm liking this. He'll probably play bishop c7. And maybe I can go after b4. Maybe I can play bishop g5. He plays knight d5. Okay. Could just take that and then knight g5 maybe? Looks like a good way to prosecute the initiative. Let's do it. Aiming at h7, also looking to pivot this other knight to e4. I grab the bishop pair. If he plays knight f4 here, you run into bishop b5. Okay, so here, queen h5 seems like a typical attacking move. I don't want to take h7. That's going to cause my pieces to get wrong-footed. So, yeah, let's go ahead and play queen h5, threatening this. Ooh, and he just plays knight there. Hmm. I'm thinking maybe rook e1 against that. Or bishop e2 and try to threaten f4. Let's play bishop e2. He might be pivoting back here with the knight, but we'll see. I can play g3 against that. There's still a, kind of a question mark as to where he's going to castle. He might play knight g6 followed by h6. Although it feels shaky for him. He plays h6 now. Hmm. Yeah, so if I play f4... And that seems strong at first sight. Let's try it and see what he has in mind. Knight g6, knight takes f7. Looks like good attacking chances with that. Although I'll have to sit, sit and calculate it. I don't know if I want to do that. He plays knight f6. Okay, again, unexpected. So if I take e5, 
What's his argument here? He's going to play queen takes e5? He can't. I could just retreat my queen, but i got to believe this is critical. Oh, he's going to give a check and then win my queen. All right, clever. All right, so let's go... Hmm, let's go here in this case. Bishop f3, maybe? Okay, I'm losing the thread on the clock here. I don't like this. Let's play bishop f3. Ah, he can just take. Of course, this rook's defended. I always forget about these backward knight moves, guys. Just a uh, big problem spot for me. Yeah, that's just a piece. Okay. Straight up piece right there. Well, like I said in the title of one of my other recent climbing or uh, clock as a weapon videos, scramble mode activated, right? <laughs> uh, take, queen takes. Okay, I can try this. May not be working, but I right, just takes with the knight. Knight e2 is coming. Yeah, that's pretty bad. That looks pretty fatal. I'm down two pieces here. I might have to practice this somehow, these backward knight moves, because I feel like it gets me a disproportionate amount of time. Um, what is that? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was a sudden change of fortune here. Knight g6. I will definitely take it, though. Good example of why you don't resign, right? Uh, okay, let's just take. Now let's make sure we win this game. Let's play h3. Try for rook c7. Okay, that was maybe not the most successful by me, but still looks okay. If he takes, I have rook d1 ideas. Okay. Yeah, maybe he was just trying something there. Wow. I was lost in many ways there after knight takes f4, rook a e1. I mean, if black really wanted to get the queens off the board, they could play knight e2 check, give back a piece to do it. Would be pretty clean, but just an inexplicable move, knight g6. Funnily enough, moving back to the square that caused me problems before. I'm curious how I should have prosecuted that initiative. Let me... Let me open this real quick before I fire up the next game. I thought I had a real promising position right around here. And I messed it up. Okay, knight g5. The eval's hovering at plus a half pawn or so. Queen h5 seems so natural here. But yeah, knight e5 is a good reply. I didn't really consider knight e5. I guess I was looking more so at g6, and I was going to play queen h6. But yeah, knight e5, and I played bishop e2. h6. And now I went ahead and played f4. But black is better now. Hmm. Okay. So right here I need something better, it seems. Although white may not even be... White may not have as promising an attack as I thought. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to look into that game later. So I'm... I think it would require some, some further analysis to determine how white should play. So let's get back in there. We were gifted a queen. Manukian 2003 is the next opponent. Another untitled opponent. Very high rating. Okay, I'll play my usual Slav. Um, let's play let's play D takes C4, mainline Slav. So I'm on two out of two despite playing some pretty bad, I'd say mediocre to bad chess so far. <laughs> so I have to capitalize on this opportunity. Okay, E3, you want to play B5 against that. Now white usually plays this. I actually play this line occasionally myself as white. Uh-huh, knight B1. Let's play e6 against that. 
And I'm just going to try to slowly arrange c5. It's the plan here. Mm -hmm. Let's challenge that knight. Is he going to play something like f4? It seems kind of weakening to me. f4, I, I will probably play c5 if he does. He's spending a lot of time. Queen f3. Okay. Uh, take. Go here. This pawn looks annoying to defend. Maybe queen g3, f4, something like that. But yeah, it doesn't quite feel correct for him. So queen a5 is something I'm looking at here. Uh, maybe just g6 as well. h5 even. h5 is interesting. Knight c5 also looks decent, although a little slow. Let's play this. And on f4, I'm thinking maybe bishop a6, although he has knight d2 as a reply. Hmm. Don't know if I can justify my queen position out there now. Okay, I'm just going to play g6 and try to get coordinated. Yeah, because he's going to go there. So queen a5 was not a productive move. But I think the position's still totally fine. Getting ready to castle. I will have to watch f5 if white has a rook on f1. And my opponent continues to spend a ton of time here. He subscribes to the John Bartholomew School of Time Management, I see. At least me in the past, right? Turning over a new leaf. All right, guys. <laughs> so let's castle. Um, I'll put a rook on d8. I might want to play king h8 coming up, too. Okay, there. Maybe knight c5. Although I'm inviting knight d6, aren't I? Okay, what about here? Let's do that. Go after c4. I need some counterplay somewhere. My king could be weak. You definitely have to take heed there. But I think knight f6 is not so concerning at the moment. I definitely need my dark square bishop to control the dark squares for the time being. He's under a minute now. If he castles, I'll chop c4. Plays bishop e2, okay. Maybe just sticking the knight in on c3 is a good idea now. This is handy as well. Okay, take and maybe just knight c3 like I was saying. I like the look of that. My queen's also helping out here. And if he plays queen h4, I, th I should be in time to play king h8, rook g8. That should be fine. Defend against mate. He can't easily get a rook on the h-file because he's blocked by his own pawn. So there shouldn't be any ideas like that yet. I think white's basically going to try to checkmate me here before he loses on time. So queen e3 I'm thinking about. Queen e3 or queen h5 if I really want to simplify. Queen h5 is actually probably a decent move. I'm going to do that. Because I get the attack on g2. And I have moves like c5 and rook d2 coming. Yeah, let's play c5 here. Ooh, and he blundered that. Check. The bishop has entered the chat. <laughs> okay, I should have just mate here. Rook g3. And I'm going to win everything on the light square diagonal. All right. So move to three out of three. Yeah, I don't think that attack was likely to succeed with his lack of development there. That said, though, I don't think I handled that completely correct. Queen a5 looked like a weak move on my part. As I said, I don't think it really accomplished much. I felt like I needed to attack e5, but I wish I would have just played g6. Because I, I chose a setup like that during the game, but queen a5, I think, just played into his hands with f4. I actually thought he was going to go knight d2 to b3. All right. Hmm. And GM Hess. Robert Hess, we meet again. Uh, let's play c4 followed by e4. No Jinji Indian for Mr. Hess, at least for the time being. Um, I know he can try and do it with c5. Plays it with e5. Okay, let's play knight e2. Yeah, Hess has been playing a lot of Blitz, I notice, on uh, chess.com recently. So he's been 
fiending for blitz action as well, just like me. And Robert Hess is actually the player I learned the Jinji Indian from, so that's why I wouldn't be surprised if he took on c3. That's why I pre-moved that move. I was commenting on a match the other day that he was playing against Georgi Mark Velashvili, Grandmaster Mark Velashvili. It's very entertaining. Okay, f4 perhaps? I want to attack on the dark squares, definitely, so f4 seems thematic. Look for f5 or e5 later. You know, strategically I'm somewhat compromised here, but that's good for my chess because now I'm obligated to attack, right? Let's play bishop f3. I don't know that he really wants to take and allow this bishop into the action. That seems pretty dangerous. And the queen's awkward here for sure. Maybe he'll go queen e6, something like that. I could take on f5 at that point. Go rook e1. Or, yeah, the bishop landing on d5 if he takes to the knight is a huge threat. He does play queen e6. Let's take here. Mm-hmm. So now I feel like rook e1 or knight d4 moves like that. He might be able to play bishop e6 here. It feels very shaky. And I could play knight d4 among other moves. Knight d4 seems pretty good. And maybe take with the pawn if he takes. Plays bishop d7. Okay, any bishop d5 business? I think knight d4. Mm, he might go to c5 with the queen, huh? Hmm. I'm trying to figure out the best way to continue my initiative here. It's actually not easy because that queen is coming to c5. I hate to take e7 here. That feels like a slowdown that I don't really want. I also hate to spend too much time, but here I am. Mm, this is a decisive moment too. I don't know, I'm going to play knight d4, and then when he plays queen c5, probably play king h1. Try to get out of the pin. Or maybe I should play rook b1, something like that. Rook b1 looks a little more combative, huh? Goes back, okay. So he didn't even play the move I was thinking of. Okay, I'm going to take, and then take here. Bring this back. I know these pawns are hanging, so he has his choice of which one. Oh, don't pre-move that, John. <laughs> choice of which one to take. 96, maybe? 96, he takes c4. Hmm. Okay, just develop the queen. Maybe trying for knight e6. He's still fairly open around his king. But mainly need to speed up at this point. Let's see if I can straighten out my pawns. I'm attacking c7. Also attacking a7, by the way. Okay, maybe some bishop d5 or queen d5 type moves in store. Or bishop coming into c6 looks good. Try to control some territory. Yeah, let's go there. Rook e5, maybe g3. g3 feels like a helpful move. Okay, he's down on the clock now. Let's go g3. Hmm. Okay, let's just play this. Love to play g4 at some point. Maybe c4 here? Hmm. Okay, let's play a4, try to get an attack going. Maybe h4 coming up, I'm not sure. Okay, got to be a little careful here. I 
unclear what's happening in this position. Trying to trade off his active rook. Um, let's go here. Yikes. Just push. I don't see anything else. Ah, man, that's a good move. Yeah, I think I just lose after that move. I could take my queen, but I didn't see anything better. Ooh, knight g6. Brutal move. Hmm. I lost the initiative there. I guess I should play queen f5 maybe in this position, but it feels bad. Is queen h4, but yeah, queen f5 was much better, enabling me to fight. Another backward knight move that got me to the same square as in the other game. <laughs> but in this case, of course, I didn't have any time. Yeah, I think I'm just losing here. Knight f4 is unstoppable, and I have no good checks. Okay, let's play this one last game. And we get a rematch. Okay, he wants this Larson setup again. Let's take that. And I'll play this again. Yeah, we did something similar last time. Let's play knight c6. Looks like he will try to attack me. Let's play f5. Uh, he'll probably play f5. Okay, let's play a6 here. Probably don't mind a trade if he wants to trade. Still trying to castle queen side if I can. Yeah, he gets f5 in. I think I'm actually okay if he plays g5 followed by f6. It feels fine. So I will invite that. I can also play for d4 if I really want to. Okay, he goes there. Now, do I want to play knight e4 or... Yeah, let's play knight e4. A little more active. He could take either on e6 or g6 or that. So if I take, he goes there. I guess he's saying that's okay for him. Bishop h6 doesn't quite work. Yeah, so let's play... Let's play this. I'll let him take if he wants to take, I guess. And then I'm going to try to post the bishop on c5. Could also play for h5 here, but I think better to gain a tempo on this pawn. Hmm. Just wants to take e4. Let's go here. So I can win f2 at my leisure, but maybe I can profit from an exchange here first. Get the h file. Hmm. Okay, let's take. So if he takes, I take here. Also threatening stuff like rook takes h3 or still this bishop takes f2 threat. This feels good for me. Let's defend that weakness for now. D5. D5, not good. Saw it right after I moved. So bishop f4, he can take with the rook. Yeah, this is bad. Okay. Try to go here and check, I guess, to complicate. This feels like it's going to run into problems somehow. Maybe bishop d4. Okay, check. I think I have to try this. Don't see any other good moves. Mm hmm. Ah, but I have check. Wonder if he just missed that move. I think he did. Now he has to play rook d2. I'm actually winning. He's getting mated. Rook d2, queen e1. And if king b1, rook takes d1, bishop c1, queen takes c1. <laughs> okay, that was a bit lucky, I think. Yeah, I don't think. Uh... I don't think either of us anticipated how much counterplay black would have in that line, because d5 at first sight just looks crushing. 
because I blocked my rook from being able to join in. So, yeah, white just needs some sort of preparatory move here. That's why I was saying bishop d4, perhaps. Let's see what the computer thinks about that real quick. If it wants to load. Are you there, Stockfish? Anyone home? <laughs> Lines, evaluation, there we go, okay. So, d5. Huh. Funnily enough, this is good for black. Yeah, I just thought that was an outright blunder. The engine wants me to play queen d7 here. Counterintuitive move, breaking the pin, but putting the, the queen on the same file as the rook. Okay, I suppose because takes is still met by bishop f4, and this time I get that in and I'm mating. So I played queen b6. Yeah. And king b1 is the top move, bishop d4, second best move, king b1, right, because that just solves white's issues entirely with queen e3 or bishop f4. There's going to be no convenient check there. Yeah, and after this, I think white's just losing. There's queen takes f4, rook d2, but white's going to be down a rook, and I should be able to clean that up, even though there is this, this threat with the e-pawn ling lingering over my head. Okay, eventful session, 4 out of 5. Don't think I played particularly well, but scored 80%. I'll keep grinding out with this series. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, this is the type of video I've really most been enjoying making lately. I've been really having a good time with this series. So, hope you guys like it as well. Let me know if you have any feedback. And enjoy your weekend, guys. I'll be back again soon with another video.